Some people might find this surprising, but this whole helicopter is being driven by these three quarter inch UNC screws. They are arranged in a 48 millimeter PCD, so they will take some significant torque like that. But I now want to increase the load on these screws, so I'm changing them for M8. There is also a problem where this bearing works its way out of the clutch housing. There is nothing other than friction holding the bearing in place and this isn't good enough. I don't understand why it tries to escape, but then I suppose every component on this machine is trying to do that. I need to mill out the drive holes in the clutch housing to accommodate the bigger M8 screws. The head of the screw is 13mm diameter, but I only have a half inch diameter cutter. The head of the bolt will not fit because of my undersized cutter, but it's just a case of shaving some off the head of the bolt. Now it's time for some reassembly. Hey, did you just tighten the flywheel nut by hand? Honestly? You should know better than that. Go on, tighten it properly. The only way I can think to prevent the bearing from walking out is to centre punch the end. The clutch friction pads seem to be holding up quite well. I must have done a couple hundred rotor starts by now. I had to add these small screws through the clutch drum steel ring. I thought a press fit would have worked, but it didn't, and slippage resulted. Come to think about it, you could say that these six M4 bolts are driving this helicopter. This is the alternator that I've bought and it's a 20 amp model fitted to Kubota machinery. It weighs 1.3 kilograms. As a stroke of luck, the casting lug on the engine sets the alternator at exactly the right height. I just need to support the other side. This is a product I quite like. It's called Torque Seal and it does a couple things. It reminds you what bolts you have fully tightened and it gives you a visual identification of a nut coming loose. This is the new radiator fan I've bought, and like the pizzas I buy from the takeaway, it's 14 inch diameter. Quite an improvement over the 9 inch version. In fact, I don't even know why they sell 9 inch pizzas. I mean, what's the point? The fan is made by Spal and generates 1500 CFM. It's a pull type fan and also generates 400 grams of thrust. I've already removed the stereo system, air conditioning, electric windows, brake lights, reverse lights and indicators, but even the seat belt I've removed 500 grams of unnecessary weight. 500 grams may not seem like a lot, but that is more than two half pound burgers. I have also removed the electric starter motor and bought this manual starter. This says over a kilogram. Now we are really talking turkey. Well, part of one. The only problem is the starter gear doesn't mesh with the ring gear on the flywheel. I can't find a flywheel for this engine with the correct ring gear, so I'm going to make a new drive gear to fit. Looking at the profile of the electric start gear, it's an Invalu 8DP with a 25 degree pressure angle. The manual start gear is a 10DP with a 20 degree pressure angle. Cutters with 25 degree pressure angles aren't available off the shelf, so I've decided to make one with a 20 degree pressure angle, but the correct pitch and see what happens. I can have a special cutter made that is correct, but why do things once when you can do them twice? The next thing I've done is remade the aluminium tail fins from carbon fiber, and this has saved another two half pound burgers in weight. There is another modification I want to do, and that is to change the drive gearing again. Flight engine RPM is 5,460 and I think max power on this engine is around 6,000. I could be losing 5 to 10 horsepower by not running at 6,000 RPM. 
I have been warned not to go above 6250 RPM with this engine or the com rods will let go. I'll have a think about what RPM to go for. I can easily make another primary drive pulley to change this. It will be adding some extra strain on everything which will be worrying on the next test but I really want to get a decent performance out of this machine. The blades have more pitch available and it could be more efficient running the pitch higher and the blades slower. My next goal with this machine is to be able to hover more time without touching the ground and to be able to yaw the craft in the direction I want it, rather than just correcting unwanted yaw. To do this I need the machine to fly for longer without overheating. There is no point looking too far ahead but the dream of hovering around a field, looking at the view and enjoying the ride is still the ultimate goal. This seems like a long way ahead at the moment but I do believe it's achievable.